guys, got another repair for you here today. Working on a 98 Chevrolet Cheyenne with a leaking fuel tank. I'm under here um, showing you on the protective fuel tank shroud where we can see evidence of the fuel coming through these vents, both up here, a little bit on the forward one, but mostly here, and, and, and running back with the, the wind as the vehicle's driven. Um, along the top of this, this plastic shroud. But no leaking when it's running or sitting. It's a very, very slow leak, um, but definitely something we want to take care of. Now, as part of diagnosing this, you know, I've taken a look along the sides of the tank, uh, you know, trying to see if I can see any evidence of where it might be coming in on the sides. I also, uh, I'm using one of these uh, Harbor Freight diagnostic cameras. I don't know if you'll be able to see this uh, quite well. I'll try here. But uh, I've also used this to take a look up on top of the tank so that I can see um, what the fuel pump module situation is here. And well, It looks like the iPhone is just not happy showing this other LCD screen, but uh, you guys get the point here. You'd be able to use a tool like this to take a look at under top and see if it's actually leaking from the fuel module, which it is not in this case. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this vent hose here. We're going to be disconnecting this fuel filler hose here, and there's a couple of straps here. There's bolts on the other side. We're going to take those down, lower this enough to disconnect the electrical off the fuel pump module, and uh, disconnect the fuel line. So I'm going to pause it here, and we'll proceed to the next few. All right. To get started, first thing we're going to do is release the uh, fuel cap, let any pressure off that might have been in there. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to go over to the area under the hood. You're going to locate the fuse relay center. Pop this, this cover off and you're going to remove the fuel pump relay. And we're doing this because we're in the process of depressurizing the fuel lines, the high pressure fuel lines, before we remove them from the fuel pump module. Now with this out and the, and the fuel cap open, you'll start the engine um, most cases it won't turn over. If it does, it'll be very brief while it runs the fuel out that's in, and then you're done with that. After that, you're going to come over and disconnect the negative connection off the battery because we're going to be doing some changes uh, later on. You'll see in the video where we change out the type of um, wiring harness that's used on the fuel pump module itself. It's a newer design since the one that was done originally when the vehicle was built. Now, this is a job that's going to take probably about five hours, possibly six, depending on, you know, um, if you have all the tools lined up ahead of time. So uh, plan for it, get all the tools ready, watch the video, and let's get started. Clamps off now. Um, these are 5 sixteenths. I was kind of surprised about that, but that's what they ended up being. A lot of dirt and crud up here. You now I don't necessarily want to get it all over the camera. Um, I'm gonna, you know, these clamps loosened, and we're gonna go loosen this clamp in a minute on the other um, on the vent hose. But I do want to show you something with this before I take a pause with the camera. Now we're dealing with um, fuel and fumes here, and you know some people would stick a screwdriver in here and kind of root around, but you know that could possibly be a spark. So that's not what I do. I use this plastic tool. You get them on Harbor Freight. They're you know they're usually used for working off upholstery, and this is what we'll use to get this off. Now, this will probably be the hardest part of this whole job is getting this this hose that's been sitting here all this time uh, to let loose of this pipe and, and slide off. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and, and, and get that. Let me show you down here though. We're gonna come down with the vent pipe, and we're gonna do the same thing. Gonna loosen up the clamp. Lots and lots of dirt and debris and crud. Make sure you got eye protection on when you're doing this. All right, and then we're going to remove this guy as, as well because this connects to the fuel tank as well. So this will be the first two changes we're going to do. All right, I'm going to get those off. So what I've done out. is, you know, I've cleaned off a lot of the dirt and crud off of here, so there's not, you know, so much debris falling, not just on the camera but into my face. Uh, I'll show you how to get these off. So first, the vent hose. What I like to do is use like some silicone spray, get that up in there, let it soak in. I've actually pre-worked this 
and I take the uh, plastic tool, and again, you know, I really don't like using metal tools when I'm dealing with fuel lines and such. Just get this guy in here and just keep pressing. Now, when you first get this going, you might have to use a, a pair of pliers, and for that, I like to use a pair of pliers with a plastic lining so they don't tear up the rubber. Let's get this guy to where he moves like that. So now you know the rubber has separated from being adhered to the, to the steel nipple. And then you can take the tool that I showed you and prize this guy off. Like so. So now we've got him off. This is going to be attached again to the fuel tank. So we have to have it loose so we can bring it down. Now for this other, for this main uh, hose up here, uh, very similar, what you're going to do here. I'm going to use this tool. Uh, and again, I've cleaned a lot of the crud off. You use this tool to get under here and crack the seal. Get your silicone lubricant. Get it up in there. I take a brass hammer. And again, a brass hammer. I don't want any sparks down here. So I'm using brass, plastic tools, hammering this guy in there and, and working him around. And what I did before I brought the camera around is I did this whole thing already. Just slowly. You got to take your time. You got to be real patient. You're going to work all the way around with that same procedure. Put this guy in there, give it a squirt of silicone, give it a couple of taps of the brass hammer, wheel it around. You're going to work it all the way around until you come back to the bottom. Once you've done that, you've broken the seal. Once you get this pipe to the point where it's, it's very flexible and moving like you see like this, you're done. Because you can't actually get it off until you lower the tank a little bit. And, and that's what we'll do. So we just want this loose so it'll come off as we lower the tank. And that's the next step we're going to do. We're going to get a jack under here, get a piece of wood to disperse the, uh, to distribute the weight. I've ran this tank down until uh, the, the needle is below empty. So I've got, you know, at most four or five gallons in here, but that's that's still going to be uh, some, some weight enough to have the jack on. We'll low, use the jack, we'll lower it, and we'll start uh, disconnecting the electrical connections to the uh, fuel pump module and the... Um, the fuel, the high pressure fuel line connections. I'll show you that. But to lower the tank after we get the jack in place, I'll show you. We're gonna release these straps. So we'll come back to that in just a second. Okay, guys. What I've done is, um, you know, you can use a transmission jack for this, but I, I just grabbed a, a, a heavy duty uh, regular floor jack for this. Put a piece of uh, wood under here to distribute the weight, and I just jacked it up just enough to push the plastic up against the tank, just very lightly. And the, the two strap studs that were two strap bolts we're talking about, and you know, I follow these over here. It's right here. They're 15 millimeter bolts. This is the one to the aft, and this is the one to the front. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these about halfway, and then I'm going to slowly let the jack down and, you know, from the other side, and then we'll begin to get to see above on top of the fuel tank here. So that's the next step. I'm going to start that, and hey, we'll come I gave back. this uh, some PB blaster, started it, broke the. Uh, Broke the torque with a manual ratchet wrench. It's a little bit too much um, torque for my electric ratchet, so I'm going to use my electric impact wrench instead to get this off. And again, it's a 15 millimeter. I'm going to slowly bring this guy down. You can see as we do that, the, the strap starts to lose, get some slack. It's no longer bearing all of the weights and have the jack in place. It's a real long nut. Up here where there's some light. All right, so we've got this one out. All right, so that one's off. Got a little bit of a, a lopsidedness uh, with the jack, but so we're going to take this front one off really slowly and uh, see if we can get it off without having to reposition the jack. I'm going to do that next. Same procedure, 15 millimeter uh, electric impact hammer. Manual. You can start it um, if you want with a manual ratchet wrench uh, to get it going. So let me get this one off and then we'll pick it up. Okay again. guys, uh, I've got the straps off and I've, I've slowly lowered the jack. And uh, depending on how much fuel you have left in here, you might have some sloshing like I had. I, saw, I noticed as the jack came down that, that, that the tank wanted to teeter-totter. You know, so I kept a piece of wood here that I could stick under the weld lip, uh, you know, as necessary to keep it from, you know, constant going either, you know, front side or back side down. So now that we got the jack fully lowered, now comes uh, the next part. We got to get the jack out of here. 
uh, unless you've changed the factory configuration, you'll have plenty of slack on both the electrical harness and the pressure fuel lines to, to put this guy right on the ground. Um, the thing we got to do now is how we get the jack out. So what I like to try and do there is uh, use a couple of two by fours as levers and lift up on the tank uh, in the front here while letting the rest, the back side of it uh, rest on the ground. And we'll pull the jack out where you don't have to have somebody help you and then slowly let it down. I, I've already kind of put my hand on here to get a good feel of it. And, and like I said, there's probably four or five gallons tops. That's all you want to have in here. Uh, you want to siphon as much off as you can. There's, there's no point siphoning all the way to the bottom because gonna, and the tank's been sitting there this long. It's going to be crud at the bottom that you don't, you don't want to uh, suck up anyway. Uh, but this is enough weight to work with. You know, 50, 60 pounds, I can work with that. So we get the, the get the uh, jack out, and then we'll finally be able to have enough access to go in and start disconnecting uh, the harness and the, and the fuel pressure lines. So that's the next thing we're going to do. Come hey back guys. after that. Uh, this is where you should be now. Uh, you've got the tank with the plastic shroud sitting on a couple of 2 by 4s uh, I, I do that just because it's easier to slide it in and out and maneuver it. And also, I don't want to, you know, scratch all that up. You know, it, it's just it's, you don't need to do that. Uh, as you lower the tank, remember we talked about before getting this filler hose loosened up. Let's see if I can get under here. The sunlight's putting a lot of glare. This guy will come right off. Uh, if he doesn't, you, you know, you can swing back on the other side as you're lowering it and, and, and swing him off. And again, you know, if you're under here, there's quite a bit of weight on this tank. You know, make sure you got jacks, jack stands, blocks of wood. Be safe when you're doing this. As you get this uh, down, and, and right before you take the jack out, as I was saying earlier, uh, bend the straps up and out of the way. Otherwise, they're, they're going to get in, in the way we're trying to bring the tank out. Same thing for the front one. At this point, the next thing we've got to do is up on top here. We've got to disconnect these two high-pressure lines from uh, the, the fuel pump module. We've got this uh, vent line, too, which is held on with a, the clamp here. And then we've got the electrical connection to the fuel pump module as well. But as you can see, this is sitting on the ground uh, on this 98 Cheyenne. It'd be the same thing, you know, it's a 30, 34 gallon tank because this is a, a long bed, a standard cab. Um, you know, if it's a Silverado, a Sierra, it's going to be very similar. But you got plenty of room to work. You know, a lot of people tell you, yeah, you got to go, you got to pull the bed off to do this. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a load of crap. This is how they do it at the dealer. This is how they did it at the factory. It's really not that big of a deal. All right, so I'm going to get a tool. I, I need a special tool. Uh, to get in here and release these quick release con uh, connectors on the fuel line and uh, and uh, I need to get a couple of uh, uh, long nose pliers to get this clamp off. Let me get some other tools and I'll show you the rest of this. We'll get this disconnected, we'll pull it out and we'll start looking at bringing the new one in. Okay guys, uh, I had to take a break and uh, work on a tool problem. I'll tell you about that in a minute but let's, let's keep going here. Okay, so first thing we're going to get off is the electrical connector. There's a safety here that needs to be pulled up. Once that's released, you can use your thumb. You don't even have to really get a good look at it. You can get your thumb on there and release the lock, and this will come out. Now, you'll notice this is an old-style connector. One of the other things we're going to have to do is GM has redesigned this, so the replacement um, pumps have a, have a different type of connector. I'll go over that in a little while. So that's off. Next thing is these high-pressure fuel lines. There's a special tool. You know, I couldn't find what I had. I had to take a run down to the auto zone, pick up uh, one of these little off-the-shelf kind of generics and, and kind of modify it to fit this AC Delco uh, original pump here. Basically you get these guys uh, wedged in inside the connector. This is an old style connector where it doesn't have a, a plastic piece on these 98s and, and earlier, well maybe not earlier but later. And there's some springs inside here that have to be uh, pushed up for this to come off the ridge. And that's what this little tool does. And I basically what I do is I cut the wing off of one side and I rotate it around until <laughs> I can get it off. And of course, that ironically was exactly when the flashlight decided he was going to die. All right, so this guy comes off here. Might be some fuel on there. But here you can see a better, better view of what this is. Say this is a. Get the other one here that I haven't modified yet for the three eighths. This is what it looks like coming out of the box. And so I just cut one of the wings off and. That way you can work it in here and, and fit it in with the, the way this old style <clears throat> this old style pump is. There's a, there's a ridge in the way here that most tools won't fit, and this will allow you to get in there. All right. Try to get this off with one hand. Let's see, this pops off. 
Next thing we're going to need to do is get this clip off so that we can take the drain line off. Let's see if I can get this other flashlight going because I need both hands to do that. There we go. All right. And then we can take this guy off. There we go. All right. Now the last one we have before we can pull the tank out is this this, this line here. Like I said, I'm gonna have to modify that other tool pair of scissors so let me do that come back show you that we'll slide it out we'll start getting ready to look at the new tank all right so let's get this guy out of here again we know we have the two by fours down here so that we can just slide it out let's see what she's wedged on up here Again, there's still a lot of fuel in here. And you can see it's out. Isn't that hard to get it out when you drop it down? I mean, this is a K2500, so it's got some clearance. On a 1500, you might have to raise your truck up a little bit. But since we're replacing the fuel tank, uh, pulling the bed isn't going to buy us anything. So we just do it the way the service manual talks about. Let me go get the uh, replacement tank and parts. We'll set them side by side. We'll come back in a minute. Okay, so here we are. Got them both side to side. Uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to kind of clean off some of the debris here because I want to make sure that these insulation straps are okay. Well, there's a possibility they might have to be replaced if they're, if they're not in good shape. So that's the one of the things you want to inspect. I also, after I pulled this out, I took a look and made sure that the straps were good. If the straps are rusty, damaged in any way, you want to replace those as well. You also want to check the fasteners on the strap underneath the frame that we took out earlier, the 15 millimeter bolts. And, and make sure that they are in good condition as well. If there's any type of pitting or deep corrosion, they need to be replaced. In this case, these are all these are all good. So what we've got on this uh, tank here, it's you know the tank is leaking. Um, I had to replace this fuel pump back in October of 2007, which was the original pump that came off in February of 1998. And I put an AC Delco on there, and I was mentioning before you to you that they've changed the design. Now the one that's on the old tank was uh, part number 25314319. That's discontinued now because they've improved the design and uh, not just the electrical connector but also the internal pump design. So I you know I got uh, nine years out of these pumps. I'm always going to stick with AC Delco. However, I could not locate an NOS GM fuel tank. They've been out of production for a while. Uh, what I ended up going with here is a is a is a Spectra model. It's a, a GM 22C, 34 gallon. I went with this model versus the Dorman after a lot of research because it had the uh, closest match to me of the fit and finish of the original GM tank. I don't like the idea of it being painted. I mean, I like the design and shape to be exactly the same because I'm going to be using all uh, GM fittings uh, to replace it. Now. Um, let me show you this, the new pump here, the new AC Delco pump. Now I told you that part number before. The new part number on this guy is uh, 191.77240. That's the GM number, and the AC Delco is MU1752. Now this is the current replacement for that one I mentioned before that's out of production. The, the old one had a Del Delco number of MU145. You can still find the old ones on eBay if you don't want to change the connector. Um, but but I'm, I'm okay with uh, making that change. Now we saw before when we were underneath, it was a square four pin, and here we've got 
a flat four pin. That's that's the design change. In the kit from AC Delco, they'll give you the new type of harness that you splice in. And we'll do this today too as part of switching to this new AC Delco design. When you get it out of the box, um, it's basically ready to go except uh, installation of the, the float. And that just needs to be snapped in. They just don't do that straight up because it's easier to pack. And this guy will go in just like this. They'll slide inside the new tank. Load first. You're going to squeeze it down. And then there's a lock ring. I'm going to go get that separately here that holds this guy in place. It'll kind of sit there for a minute, but that's not going to be permanent. It's another AC Delco part I picked up. Part 2255. 2577. This is the original um, lock ring for the fuel pump module. And we'll put that on there as well. Uh, let me show you on the old one uh, how this comes off and, and goes back on though. So you're going to need a couple, of, a couple of tools to do this. You can get a, either get a compressor with an air hose to blow some of this debris off. If you're keeping this tank and you were only replacing the fuel pump, this is a lot of work, you know, just to replace the fuel pump. Um, you don't want any debris to fall in there. In my case, both these things are going. Even though this pump is working fine, and you can see I left my modified tool on there before for the 3 8 line. This is what I was talking about, clipping those uh, wings off of that so they could fit under there. You're going to use a special tool here to grab this, this, this ring. This guy pinches these in, as you can see. Now, if you don't have this kind of a tool, you know, you can improvise with some other types of tools, but basically give it a pinch here. And it might be a little loose, I mean, a little bit tight if it's been rusty for a long time, but you know, I just pinch it in and work it out from these, these ridges. Once you get the first couple of them out, you can work the rest of them out by hand. It's been on there since 2007 when I last had it done, and you, you can see it's not that big of a deal to get off. And again, if you were keeping the tank, you'd want to get this debris out of here. You know, I, I, I'd recommend blowing it off before you were to remove this. There's always going to be some residual fuel in the sump of the pump, too. Uh, keep that in mind when you take this guy out. And he just pops right up and then you can take him out. So you can see there's a bit of a design change. Looks like GM got rid of these external springs, went with some type of an internal design that's... All right, so and if you don't know uh, what kind of pump you had, and it was the original, there'll be these three letter codes on, like for this particular one on, on this truck with this size fuel tank, it's code GFT. And, and that's another way that can, can help you map up, match to what the, you know, the, the correct replacement pump is. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and, and correctly finish mounting uh, the new pump module on the replacement tank. So I'm going to take our Delco lock ring. And, you know, your, your, your tank may come with a replacement um, lock ring. You might not, might not have to have this. In my case, I just wanted to make sure I had same quality of part I had before. And then um, I'm going to mount this O-ring on here as well. Now for this O-ring, one of the things I want to do is lubricate that. What I'll do for that is I'll put some 30 weight motor oil on it. weight of the oil is not as important as actually lubricating it before you fit it in. It's running through here a couple of times because it's kind of windy. You don't want any debris to have stuck to this. So I'm going to take this guy out. And again, you want to be real careful. You're not bending the sender arm or damaging the little contact switch there. I'm going to slide this guy up and over. It's going to sit right along the neck here. Right. 
Looks like he's in good shape. Sit back down there again. Push him down into position. All right, just a really tight fit. Um, got in here and lubricated with some additional oil all the way around. And found that just needed a little bit of persuasion from this screwdriver. There's no fuel in this tank, so I'm not worried about using a metal tool. But I just started working it all the way around until I could get this to fully seat, this being the a new O-ring. It's got a little bit here on the back. Yeah, we should have it. There we go. Okay, now it's in place. It's nice and flush all the way around. Now we'll install the lock ring. Keep it in place. Let's start just manually routing it into these grooves. And that is it. We're all set. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off, we're going to do the clamps on these two hoses, clean them up. We'll transfer them over to the new tank. We'll stick, um, I stuck some um, blue paper towels on all the fuel lines, the two primary. Uh, pressure lines and the vent line to keep debris out as well. I recommend that here as well. Once we get this cleaned out, we'll do the same thing on the big one. We'll lift out, we'll lift off these these straps. Got to do it very carefully so they don't come apart. We'll, we'll, we'll glue them down onto the new tank. We'll get the old tank into the bed so we can take it down to uh, the metal recycling when we're done, and we'll transfer the new tank to the plastic shield, and uh, we'll start putting it back on. Come back in a minute. Okay. We've got the uh, hoses uh, transferred over from the old tank, put on the new tank, cleaned up the hoses inside, outside, and uh, lubed up and cleaned up the clamps. So, you know, we're almost ready to go here. Uh, I've moved over intact the insulation straps. You know, these basically keeps there from being noise. Now, this Spectra tank is covered with a, an anti-rust compound. You know, normally if you were going to glue something down, uh, you'd want to remove that. But I, I don't because this can get moisture underneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and use some Super 77 adhesive from 3M to mount this guy down. I just need him really to stay put long enough to get it back up against the frame. Do the same thing on the other side. And when you're pulling these off the old tank, just go really slow. Peel them nice and slow and uh, you won't have any tears. Okay, so we're almost ready. Now we're gonna move the new tank into the shroud. I'm gonna clean the shroud first, but before I did that, I wanted you guys to see uh, what the cause of the leaking was. So if we, once we got the old tank off, we can see there's a number of small stones that over the years have worked themselves into the, into the shroud itself. And the ones here that we're rubbing actually caused the problem with the tank. This is the source of the leak. And correspondingly looked under the tank and you can see from the, the drip stream that this is what the problem was so this is the problem you know so it's great that you have these vents to get water out so you don't have um, you know corrosion attacking the tank from that um, but sometimes these stones get in there and they cause this problem as well so that was the source of this we're gonna clean this out uh, put the other tank back in and uh, we'll put it back under okay guys we've got this uh, ready to remount now I've got the new tank sitting in the original plastic shroud. We've got our clamps ready to go on the ends once we get it into position. We've got our straps in the right place. We've got our insulation strips in the right place. So the last thing we got to do is, is connect this up. Uh, I already had uh, started to do this and then remembered I wanted to, to film this for you guys. So I already got one of the pressure lines connected, but uh, we'll keep going with the others here. I'll also show you how to connect on the new electrical connector. So let's do that now. So I had marked one of these lines with tape so I knew which side went on what. 
always make sure you remember to pull out this towels that were used to insulate it off. So we'll put the vent line on first. That Lots of camera problems tonight. Got that going again. All right, so we just slid this vent hose on. I'm just going to get this clip into position. Slide this guy in. You want to hear that click? He's in position, he's in position, he's in position. Okay, now the new connector has a different kind of locking clip. Use a flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to use this little awl here to prize this guy off. Maybe I should get a screwdriver. I don't know. Let's see. There he goes. Okay. This is going to come off. Then we can connect it. And then we can reinstall the locking clip. Hey guys, hey, I apologize for the lighting situation. Um, ended up running out of time between having to go to AutoZone and get that uh, disconnect tool and grabbing some dinner. And uh, the problem with the iPhone turned out to be it was running out of space. So I lost the other part of this video last night. So I just came out here to show you again what I had done. Uh, since I've lost that video. Um, when the tank's empty, you'll be able to push it up by yourself. You know, you could probably have somebody help you, but what I tended to do is just use a knee on the front part and push it up in the back until I could wedge a two by four in there. And then I can get up here and tighten these, these bolts and just get them started anyway. Um, that'll end up getting torqued to 115 inch pounds or 13 Newton meters. Uh, I cover them with uh, PB blasters to help them go in better. And you just keep going back and forth, um, each one, one at a time, until you get them both torqued down. And then after you get those torqued down, you'll, of course, be able to come back over here, get this guy tightened up, and get this guy tightened up. Now, I actually noticed that there's about a quarter of an inch difference in the length with the replacement tank than the original GM tank. But the clamp is still behind the, the, the rib on the nipple of the filler inlet pipe here. So it's, it's, it's good. I've transferred the... Uh, fuel that I took out of the other tank, of the old tank. I've uh, reconnected my negative terminal I, on, on the battery. I've uh, put the fuel relay back in, tightened up the cap. And then what you want to do is get in uh, and turn the key, not to, to start, but just turn on enough for the lights to come on on the dash a couple of times, let the fuel, the new fuel pump module prime itself and, and push it up through the fuel filter into the engine. Do that uh, at least two times and then try to turn her over. In my case, uh, she started right up. And so we're good to go. The only other thing I'm going to do with this is come down here and clean the fuel stains off of here so that I can tell if, um, you know, we get any other additional links. Uh, I'm going to fill it up about halfway, not full tank until I get a chance to check that. And I'll uh, use that uh, Harbor Freight camera to look on top and make sure we're not leaking anything at the fittings. Uh, but uh, this is it. I hope this helps you out. It's not that bad of repair. Um, replacement, uh, like I said, it's about five, six hours. Um, it would have Took me a little longer because of the not being able to find one of those tools, but uh, otherwise it's not that bad. Hope this helps you out. Thanks.